my year one. Firstly, well done for all your fantastic home learning last week. Mrs Fletcher and I were just blown away by all of the photos and emails coming through. We were so impressed with how you've kept on going, even though you're at home, with all of the learning that we've set you to do. And you've been so enthusiastic about the little red riding hood work. You did a brilliant job of the science experiment and the taste testing and I've seen some fabulous maths as well, so well done. This week we are continuing the theme of Little Red Riding Hood. Here she is and I have got a new story to share with you. Before I do that, let's see if we can remember some of those chatterbox words that I taught you last week. There was this one. We had plan, and this one, cloak, and this one, snarled. Keep your ears listening because you may hear one of these words as we read our new story this week. And our new story is a little bit similar to the story of Little Red Riding Hood. I bet you can guess why. Because it's called Little Red and the Very Hungry Lion. I wonder how this story is going to be similar and how it might be a bit different to Little Red Riding Hood. And there are three words I would like you to listen out for as I read the story and remember like we always do in school if you hear them put your thumb up so the first word is this one here it's got the shh digraph at the beginning it's shade shade the next word is this one here and it's covered covered and the last word is this one decided you might want to stop the video now and have a quick chat with your grown-up about what these words mean or when I finish reading the story today you can have a chat and think about where these words appeared in the story so we had this one shade we had covered and decided. Okay, let's get the story. Little Red and the Very Hungry Lion. This is Little Red and today she is going to be gobbled up by a lion. And this is Lion. Well, that's what he thinks is going to happen anyway. One hot morning, Auntie Rosie woke up covered in spots. There was only one thing for it. Ring, 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 ring. Oh dear, oh dear, said Little Red. When she heard the news, I'll come right away. So she packed a basket, she waved goodbye to her daddy and she set off. She's been inside the shop and I think she's bought Auntie Rosie some spot medicine. It was a long way to Auntie Rosie's house. Little Red walked under the giraffes over the sleepy crocodiles and she dashed past the chattering monkeys. She crept around the termite mounds and under the leaping gazelles and she caught a lift on an elephant and wiggled her way around the hippos and the warthogs and waved hello to the meerkats. Then she sat down for a rest in the shade of a shady tree and that's when the lion arrived. 
the very hungry lion. Oh, hello, heard the lion. Where are you going to? To visit my auntie, who is covered in spots, said Little Red. And in the time it took for his tummy to rumble, the very hungry lion had cooked up a very naughty plan. My very clever plan. Number one, sneak off to Auntie Rosie's house. Number two, hide her in a cupboard. Oh, number three, dress up as Auntie Rosie. Number four, wait for a little bit. Number five, jump up and eat Little Red. Number six, eat Auntie Rosie for pudding. Oh, and he rushed off to put his plan into action. First, the very hungry lion plonked Auntie Rosie in a cupboard and locked the door. Then, he squeezed himself into one of her nighties and covered himself all over with spots. Of course, when Little Red arrived, she realised right away that it wasn't Auntie Rosie sitting in the bed. She quickly looked around. She spotted her auntie peeking through a gap in the cupboard. And then Little Red decided that she was going to teach that naughty lion a lesson. Oh, Auntie, cried Little Red, what tatty hair you have. And before the very hungry lion could even lick his lips, Little Red had brushed and combed and twisted and braided until the lion had a lovely new look. <gasps> this had not been in the lion's plan. He opened his mouth wide and <gasps> blimey, said Little Red. What grubby, grotty teeth you have, Auntie. She tutted. And Little Red made the very hungry lion brush, brush, brush his teeth until they sparkled. Oh, Auntie, sighed Little Red. What an old nighty you were wearing. And before the very hungry lion knew it, Little Red had found him a much prettier frock to wear. This had not been in the lion's plan, actually. Stop! yelled the lion. I am a very hungry lion and my tummy is grumbly. Little Red wagged her little finger. Well, Trying to gobble up children and poorly aunties is very, very naughty. If your tummy was rumbly, all you had to do was ask nicely for some food. The very hungry lion let Auntie Rosie out of the cupboard and said, Sorry, ever so politely. Then the three of them munched through a basket full of doughnuts together. The lion had five. Soon it was beginning to get dark. So the lion walked all the way back home with Little Red on his very best behaviour. And he promised to never, ever try to eat another auntie or any children. But he might be tempted to eat uh, Daddy, <gasps> there's Little Red and do you know what she's saying? She's saying, no, bad kitty.
the end. So, some of the words that you would have heard in the story today were shade, we had covered and decided. So you can spend a bit of time now talking about where you heard those words in the story. And um, before I leave you today, um, I have left you lots and lots of different activities to do with the little, the little Red and the Very Hungry Lion and Little Red Riding Hood this week. Um, so I hope you enjoy those. Looking forward to seeing all your photos and emails soon. Take care and we'll see you soon.